after the fun man and circuit uh, yes, it's an oscilloscope. The the Irish equipment manufacturer Oscilla. And, and, holy smokes, George! Is that an old school oscilloscope? Why? As you know, Jerry, around here we're so old school we just call it school. But yes, as a matter of fact, it is. Uh, this is a 1964 Heathkit oscilloscope that uh, I, I helped my father build. Here's the manual that that with with his notes still in it. With his little check marks by Redwire to C31 S2. That means solder, and there will be two connections there. So, yes, it is, and it was broken. And I got three aspects of this experiment that, that caught my eye. First, let me tell, t tell you uh, my goal was to show you guys a little bit more and to show myself how a phase shifter works uh, and how it makes the sound that it does. But I'm all, I also wanted to explore what waveforms look like compared to how, what they sound like. The oscilloscope's the right tool for that. Um, so three aspects caught my eye in the, uh, in the execution of this one. Uh, one of them was, how do you fix the oscilloscope? So that part was fun. Uh, what it looked like when I got it was, the signal was way over here, and when I turned the horizontal position knob, it would go, and then creep back over there. I'd bring it back and turn it again and go and then creep back over there. So I figured, okay, something's wrong with the knob and I'll just look at the knob. So I opened it up and sure enough, there was a, uh, there was a, the end of a resistor hanging out in space. So uh, I soldered that down. I took all the knobs off and sprayed them with contact cleaner and exercised them a little bit until they worked well. I tightened down all the knobs so they wouldn't shake anymore and break any other things loose. And, uh, you know, I did the usual fix it tap, you know, that, that usually helps tube electronics, you know, give it a tap or two, rearranges, helps the contacts be better. But it's working pretty much perfectly as far as I can tell. The first, so, so the first thing was hardware uh, and, and how you fix it. And you just kind of look for the thing that's broken and you think of what might cause that and you, you approach it and you try not to be too scared. Second thing is how does the oscilloscope work? And the uh, uh, the manual, the first experiment in the manual is turn all the knobs and see what happens. So you get used to, okay, this is the, the embiggening knob. Uh, you know, you, you, you kind of get poke around on it and you find out what it's doing and, and, and what each little bit does. And it's really not that daunting. Um, the uh, well, this looks like I got a little loose connection there and there somewhere. Um, there we go. Uh, what an oscilloscope is, is it's a, is in this cathode ray tube, there's a dot that's flying back and forth according to a pattern that I set here, or a speed that I set here. So I'm changing the speed at which that dot is moving back and forth. So it's, it's, it's just moving back and forth, and it's going up and down in accordance with whatever signal I'm feeding in here. And that what I'm feeding in right now sounds like this. And that's the output of Dad's ICO tone generator. So it's, this thing just sends out sine waves of varying frequencies. So since those are in the audio range of, of, of frequencies, uh, it's, it's a really good signal to send through a, a guitar effect and see what that guitar effect is really doing. So first let's listen to it. You all know this familiar sound. It's a phase shifter, and what's literally happening is it's taking all the little sine waves, and I specifically do mean that, it's taking all the sine waves in what's coming in, and it's putting them 
out of phase and then back in phase with, with, the, with themselves. It's splitting each one in two, delaying it a little bit, so that it goes in and out of phase. And you can watch that happen. And I set it to sine wave. Turn it off so you see the sine wave. Okay, I'm going to turn it back on. And here, get it to lock in. You can see it. Let me see if I can get it to be a little out of balance so that you can see kind of what it's doing. Well, it, it actually is working so perfectly that you kind of can't tell. But it's taking two of that same signal and it's running it past each other. And that has the effect of where the, uh, at any point where there's uh, something trying to force it up and something trying to force it down at the same time, it levels out. So what that sounds like... mostly a loudy softy but there's a little bit of interesting tone in it too now if all you were running through it was a sine wave then in theory all you'd get is loud and soft loud and soft so why does it sound interesting because like I said it's doing that effect to all of your sine waves so when you play guitar, well, there, there's a theory that says that any sound, no matter how complicated, can be made out of sine waves. So every there's just this weird frequency of a lot of this frequency of sine wave and a, and a little bit of this, and this one's a little out of phase. But what, when one frequency is in phase, another frequency might be out of phase. So watch this. this. This phase shifter, instead of doing what most of them do, most of them just cycle like that. So, or they go. But this one, instead of cycling, you can pedal through it using using the, the, the pedal here so we can see what's going on. So at a spot where that frequency is in phase, if I change frequencies, find another frequency where it's very out of phase, but if I move the pedal a little bit, that one comes back into phase. When I go back to the original frequency, that one's out of phase, and you can hear it too. You can hear So we can put that one back in phase. Uh, so that is a really good audio visual, I think, for me. Uh, that's a real good uh, uh, correspondence or a way to, to match the video to the audio, what, what sounds look like. And back to you, Jerry. Hey, that's pretty cool. Oh. I always love seeing, seeing things, uh, sine waves beating against each other and adding and subtracting amplitudes. You'll see that everywhere. In fact, I'm pretty sure that when the, you know, whatever theory ends up being the general theory of all everything, relativity and everything, uh, it'll pretty much turn out that most of the things in the world are just a whole mess of sine waves beating on each other. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah.